Hi everyone, this is Nick, and so we are going to be doing our initial setup for the Magenta series of espresso machines. Now, what I'm going to talk about will apply to either model. I'll be covering both the included accessories that come in the box with your machine, as well as the additional setup of a Mavia Intenza water filter. So this is optional, but it will protect your machine from scale buildup and help purify some of the taste of your water if you're not using a pre-filter before putting it in the machine. I'll also cover some basic menu navigation so that you can understand how to customize your machine to your liking before you start brewing. So let's get into it. Now let's take a look at the accessories that are included with the Magenta Espresso machines. So starting from left to right, we have our dual purpose adjustment key slash coffee scoop. There is a hexagonal socket located on the handle of this, which is used to adjust the grinder. On the other side, we have a scoop, which is used to dose pre-ground coffee into the bypass doser if you want to use pre-ground instead of whole beans. Next to that, we have our water hardness test strip. This is used in conjunction with the machine's water hardness settings so that you can program in the hardness of your water. This simply dips into the water and will give you a result in a matter of minutes. Next to that, we have a tube of Gaja's Brew Group Lubricant. This is a food safe lubricant that is used to lubricate the mechanisms inside the machine's brew group where your coffee is actually ground and brewed and it keeps them sliding nicely to preserve the mechanical integrity of the machine over time. Now, our last accessory is exclusive to the Magenta Prestige. It is a water spout. It simply installs in the socket where the auto frothing carafe is located. So either to dispense hot water from your machine or when you have that carafe stored in the fridge, you can install this to simply cover the socket and preserve the aesthetics of your machine. After you've gotten your machines out of the box, the first thing you'll need to do is get them plugged in. Assuming that that's done, there's one key difference between the baseline Magenta and the Magenta Prestige. There is no physical power switch on the back of the Magenta. There is one on the back of the Magenta Prestige. Switch that to the on position and we can get started. Now, before we can tell if our machine's even operating, the first thing you're going to want to do is remove the sticker. Now, Gaja has conveniently indicated for us which corner is the peeling corner for our machine. Simply peel that off and we're ready to power on the machine. Now, something to take note of is that there are actually, there's actually like a little bit of a delay here, so we want to push and hold the on-off button. And when you hear that beep, you know that the machine is on. So, the first thing that we'll probably be prompted to do is add water to the machine after it's done heating up. These are not brand new magentas, but I will be walking you through every single step that you'll be prompted to do when you're first setting up your machine, so no worries. Of course, the first thing again though is going to be to add water to the reservoir. All right, so this is some common sense for basically any new espresso machine or really appliance that you're going to use that touches food or water, but you want to get that plastic rinsed before you use it. Now, it's located if you're facing the machine on the left, the other hatch is for the grinder. So all you got to do, there's a little tab, there's a little socket right on the side, pick that up, lift out. It's easier if you're lifting with both hands. And let's give this reservoir a little rinse a before we get started. So I've got my reservoir rinsed and filled. Now, if you're wondering how much, there is a max line that you can see on the one side of the reservoir to let you know about how much water you need. Now, this rinsing process is something that you're only going to do during initial setup. Once that's complete, you can actually fill the machine from the top using your sink if you've got a spout that can reach or with a small pitcher. Now, you'll simply turn this around so that the max indicator is facing the back of the machine and you can lower the reservoir in. What's gonna happen is the machine is going to prime itself, which is where it pulls water in through the pump and dispenses it. That's why I have this frothing pitcher here so that I can catch any water that's being dispensed. Now, something I do want to emphasize is that, again, because this is not a brand new machine, all that our Magenta did was simply rinse the spouts. But when you're priming the machine for the very first time, water is going to be drawn through that steam wand. So you want to have a container underneath for your initial prime. That's not something I can recreate, so just keep that in mind when you're getting your machine ready out of the box. 
All right, so our reservoir is rinsed. Now let's take a look at the other prompts that we'll be receiving. We'll go into the clean and settings menu. This is where you'll be able to access the auto cleaning functions as well as the deeper programmability for your settings. This is where we'll take a look at the other prompts that you'll be receiving on your brand new Magenta. So we go into settings and of course our first option is language. Now language is something that you'll be prompted to program. The machine is going to default to English and most likely you can simply press the check icon to select that you want English. Now we'll click return because ultimately I have more to show you. If you've noticed too, when you're in a programming menu like this, these top two squares, they correspond to scroll up and scroll down. And then on the left and right for the bottom here, we have confirmation and return. So that's how you can basically say, yes, this is the choice I want to make, or no, I want to go back a bit. So we're on language, but we want to get to water hardness. Now, water hardness by default is going to be set to four squares. So again, this is not a brand new machine and we've already made our change. These squares correspond to the result of a water hardness test that you can perform with the included test strip with your machine. We'll take a look at that in just a moment. It's important to note that your machine is defaulting to four because that's going to tell it how frequently to descale. Gaja is not taking any chances and they're basically saying, we're going to assume that the water is as hard as it can be so that you don't miss out on descaling. Descaling is the process of removing mineral buildup inside the boiler. This is the number one cause of issues for your machine. So it's important to make sure that your water hardness is correct and that you are regularly descaling. So let's take a look at how we would actually test our water and also the process of getting a filter set up so that we can activate the Mavia filter in our machine. All right, so you've seen how you can find the language and water hardness settings in your machine, but we actually need to do a little bit of lab work now to test our water hardness. Now, fortunately, you don't need to be a water scientist. If you can read four squares on a test strip, you'll be able to program your magenta no problem. Now, for this process, we're actually going to use this bowl to also prime our water filter. We're going to basically knock out two steps at once and I'm assuming that you'll be responsible and use a Mavia filter in your machine. So first thing you want to do is submerge your test strip so that all four squares are in the water in your bowl here. And just make sure that this water is the same water that you're going to be using to brew with in the machine. Once you've gotten these squares pretty well saturated so that it doesn't look like there's any dry spots on them, simply take them out shake off any excess water and set that off to the side. Now the Mavia filter itself simply needs to be submerged in some water with the air bubbles shaken out before we get it installed in the reservoir. So simply submerge it in your water, give it some squeezes. You can shake it as well to kind of move some of that water around on the inside. And it won't sink completely, but once you've got it where the water inlet is more or less submerged, you know that your filter is ready to be installed. And so in the meantime though, we'll wait. It'll take again about a minute and then we can take a look at the results of our strip, program our hardness and activate the filter. Okay, so it's been about a minute and it's time to take a look at the result of our water hardness test. Now, I'm a bit of an expert when it comes to reading these, but I can tell that there is a slightly more orange tinge to the two squares on the left and a more green tinge to the two squares on the right. That indicates a total water hardness of two, which is what Gaja would consider to be fairly soft water. Now we'll go back into our menu again and we'll scroll down to water hardness and we'll move it from the default of four to a new setting of two. Successfully saved. Now on to the fun part. We're going to get our water filter installed. Okay, and show time for our water filter. We'll go back into settings. It's our second option. I think some uh, subtle reminder that you should definitely be using a water filter. And we'll simply select the activate option. Now, this is prompting us that it's a five minute process, but if you've done things my way, it will save you some good time. So we'll click the start and stop button, which is now flashing. And it's got a couple of prompts. The first is that the filter itself needs to be set to the correct position. So on the base of the filter, and I'm going to try not to get too much water on the counter here, 
there's actually a A, B, and C marker here, and there are two grips for your fingers, and so it's telling us A is one or two. So since our hardness was two, we'll simply switch the arrow so that it's now pointing at A, and we'll confirm. Shake the filter up and down and submerge it in the water to eliminate air bubbles. Well, guess what? We took care of that, so we're good to go. And now the final step is to insert the filter into the water tank. Now, your water reservoir should be about three quarters of the way full. You don't want it all the way full because you are going to need a little bit of room in there for installing the filter. So simply lift the reservoir out of the machine. And on the side here with the water inlet is where we will be installing the filter. So have the intake facing away and simply press down. And you can see it's transparent, so it's easy to tell that you're in so that the filter is securely installed. Now, we'll simply lift the reservoir back up. And I like to give it a little push just on both sides to make sure it's securely in. And we have inserted the water filter into the tank. Now, something to note is that you are going to want something to catch the water because we're going to have pretty much the same process of priming that you'd get on a new machine where a lot of water is going to be drawn from the wand here and then dispensed into a container. So I'll just grab a frothing pitcher that I have on hand. This is a 20 ounce. It's a good size for this. Confirm. It's asking us to fill and insert the water tank, which we just did. Place the container under the spout. We're ready to rock. And that water comes out pretty instantaneously. So do uh, have something ready when it's time to prime. And with that, we have activated our water filter. Now, the machine, based on our water hardness, is going to prompt us when it's time to replace the filter, and it will also reduce the frequency at which the descaling alert is displayed. So, if you want to descale less and ensure that your water tastes even better thanks to filtration, we strongly recommend that you install a Mavia filter, especially when you've got a new machine out of the box. It will help prevent some headaches and ensure better tasting espresso in the long run. We've taken a look at water hardness, language, and water filter activation. So it's time though to take a look at the other options that we have in our clean and settings menu. If we go to clean, we have two options, descaling and then brew group cleaning. These are automated processes that are used to either fully descale the machine or to clean and rinse out the brew group. Now, these are used in conjunction with some Gaja cleaning accessories for descaling use a bottle of Gaja decalcifier. This is the only certified and safe to use decalcifier that we recommend for Gaja espresso machines. The brew group cleaning uses the Gaja coffee clean tablets. The key difference between these two procedures is that descaling is used to clean out mineral deposits inside the boiler from your water. The coffee clean tablets remove coffee oils and other coffee solids that can build up inside the brew group and on your spouts. Going back from here though, we'll go into the rest of our settings. So we have our standby time, and this is simply to program the machine between 15 to 180 minutes or three hours to determine how long the machine will stay active before powering down into a low power standby mode. Going back from there, we have units, which allows you to switch from US Imperial units to milliliters. So if you're up north in Canada, say for instance, and you want to see something in metric, simply go ahead and make the change to milliliters. And then in menus like our drink programming, you'll now see the volumes displayed in milliliters. Going back to the rest of our settings, one that you have not been hearing so far is button sound. So you can turn on or off a sound for when you're clicking on these buttons. I typically prefer it to be silent, but you may enjoy the actual feedback, especially since these are capacitive touch. And the other option that I had skipped over, of course, is our counter. So this is either maybe for some bragging rights or if a technician is looking at the machine, you can simply see how many of each drink you've made. Now, let's say though that you want to go back to defaults. If you've got the machine in storage, say, you can also return the unit to its factory settings by activating the factory settings option. And with that, that covers pretty much all of the options that are available in the clean and settings menu for the Magentas. Keep in mind that on the Magenta Prestige, the key difference is going to be that under our cleanings uh, you know, menu here, 
you can have options for a full rinse or a quick rinse of the milk carafe. With our water filter activated, we're going to turn our attention now to the grinder in the machine. So the grinder is located underneath the panel on the top right. And we can actually see a few key things in here. So there's the auger that pulls the beans down into the grinder, our grind adjustment post, and then the bypass doser. So I will not be covering this, but this is how you actually load pre-ground coffee into the machine. Now, if you want, you can access my brewing video for the Magenta series where I actually show in detail how the bypass doser works. So one thing that you may have noticed is that there's no coffee in the hopper. We recommend that you do not put any beans into the machine until you are ready to start brewing. And before you're ready to start brewing, you do want to get your grind setting adjusted. Now, this yellow post here is clearly visible. If you have beans in the machine, you'd have a harder time seeing it. The other thing is, it's harder to adjust the grinder once you have beans in it. You can only safely make a single adjustment before you have to grind and brew coffee in order to change that again. If you have no coffee in the machine, we can make free adjustments and we're able to set it exactly where we want. Now, this little post has a small arrow that points to one of these five dots. So that ranges from the most fine to the most coarse. You'll simply take the hexagonal socket on your scoop put it over the post and then it's sort of like a medicine bottle where you want to push and then turn. So turning it to the left makes it more fine. There's also a plus and minus little indicator on the top of the scoop if you need a reference point. But we recommend going as fine as you can with this machine. It helps get you really the richest kind of shots that you can get. The machine can handle it. We've tested it plenty of times. But once you've done with that, simply add some coffee and you'll be ready to start brewing.